Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday, January 26th, 2016, 7 p.m. Recreation Commission meeting. For those who are wishing to uh, address the Recreation Commission on any item on the agenda or under public appearance or oral communication, please complete a speaker card located at the entrance of City Council Chambers and submit it to staff as early as possible. At this time, I call the meeting to order and can we have a, a Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a roll call. You may have a roll call. Commissioner Mayafula is absent this evening. Commissioner Proano? Here. Commissioner Pastor? Here. Vice Chair Kelly? Here. Chair Letta? Here. Okay, approval of the agenda. So moved. Do I have a second? Here. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Approval of the minutes from Tuesday, November 24th, 2015. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, director's report. Good evening, chair and members of the commission. Our first item for this evening is considering new fees for the after school youth recreation program, affectionately known by its uh, acronym in our corner of the world, AYRP, after school youth recreation program. Um, the staff is recommending that the commission make a recommendation to the city council to adopt a resolution that will establish a new fee schedule that would go into effect beginning school year that commences uh, in August, September, the 2016-2017 the school year. So not immediately, this would go into effect next, the start of next school year. And uh, for those of you that might not be familiar with the after school recreation program, we provide a safe, enriching, and educational environment for about 300 students. And we're currently serving four schools Panorama School, which I know the chair is familiar with, program there, Unipera Sara School, Marjorie Tobias, and Daniel Webster. And the program offers students a diversity of after-school experiences, including you know, very important uh, silent and sustained reading, general writing, there's some homework assistance, some enrichment, and uh, cooperative play, fitness challenges, and there's nutrition and social interaction. How uh, through the through the chair? How did those four schools get chosen over the twenty-one schools in the district? We did serve other schools, um, and I know Westlake School decided that they wanted to do it on their own. Oh, okay. um, we have other. See, these are the AYRP schools. We also have the ACES program at other schools. So we're on a total of nine campuses. Don't ask me to name the other five. No, I won't. I but, promise. I won't. But I know uh, you know Bayshore and Robertson out in the Bayshore or uh, with the ACES, which is a separate funding stream mm -hmm. um, f from the state. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I think it's a school by school, principal by principal uh, decision. And you know, right now, these are the four schools that we're working with. Thank you. And if you've been uh, following the city council the last couple meetings, you may have seen a couple of actions that will directly affect our department in in terms of our over near overall expenses and that those are ask me uh, which the majority of our employees are ask me members did did uh, settle on a new contract that will see a slight bump in their salaries and also if you've been following uh, the minimum wage a lot of, we have a lot of employees in our department that work at minimum wage and that um, as of January 1 in California minimum wage went up to $10 an hour. So that's that's more than a lot of our staff that are associated with this program had made. So our costs have just jumped up a little bit. And uh, we're, we're not in the business to go backwards um, in terms of revenue. We're try, trying to be um, sensitive in our cost recovery efforts as the city has its ongoing struggles with, with the budget, which you'll be hearing more of in the next couple of months. So the in the current school year, um, Fee, the monthly base fee is $53. Our proposed monthly base fee would be $64. It's for a month per, per child. Um, if you look at, you know, the, the revenue that'll bring in is, 
is, is an increase naturally of where, where we are, but we will continue to have an estimated annual subsidy to keep this program going, to keep the kids busy in a productive way after school. Uh, we're, our department would be subsidizing roughly uh, $68,000 going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, the estimated subsidy for this current year that we're in right now, we estimate that to be about $79,270. So we're, we're narrowing the subsidy a little bit, but uh, you know, costs seem to be going up in everything. And we seem and we think that we offer a really good product at a very you know fair and reasonable cost and as uh, commissioner mentioned that uh, it's it's a lot less expensive than a babysitter or a tutor or one of the private options like kumon or, or some of the other you know popular after school activities so that is what's before you um, i'm happy to answer any questions that you may have and uh, through the chair, I just, I know this sounds silly, and I, you know, maybe a dollar doesn't mean something, but uh, why didn't we just do with a flat $10? I mean, wh- what, where, how did we come up with $9? You know, we did lots and lots of math, and um, I want to say... It's $11. I didn't bring it with oh, me. Oh, backwards, think, 53 to 64? But, oh, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> 9, 11. How did we come up with 11? I, we, we looked at a bunch Sorry, of different options and, and trying to hit a sweet spot that, that we wouldn't dig a deeper hole in terms of our subsidy, but, but keep it affordable. And, and that's a great question. I don't have the exact answer. I might have it in the binder back there. No, but no, it's but okay. we, we looked at a whole bunch of ranges, mm-hmm. and this seemed the most palatable to, to stay kind of in the, in the same ballpark in terms of the subsidy area um, and not – you know oh i'm sorry we, so we, we want to make it as as affordable as possible so this I, pardon me so the subs subsidy from the state that dictates no to no no well no no this is not this is this You're is paid getting, no we're not getting this is this is general, general, general fund general. subsidy from the city of oh, daily city I see, okay. i'm yeah. sorry i didn't clarify that no this program this does not have a state subsidy than, the right. aces program which will maybe bring just as an information item um that is subsidized That's by the state. This one is subsidized by the city's general fund. Oh, okay. So the, it's, it's a pay-as-you-go. Well, it's not really. You pay by the month for the students. They, they, they pay the entire month. So most of them, they're there every day, five days a week. So if you break that down to five days a week, four weeks in a month, um, you know, their, their daily fee is pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable, reasonable. Pretty really reasonable, reasonable. yes. Yeah, very reasonable. And it's, and it's, it's a very productive environment for the kids to be in um you know the alternative for some of the you know be latchkey kids where they're left to their own devices to try to figure out how to do their homework and having a couple kids um with lots of homework myself i know there there are times they, they need a little extra attention to understand the assignment even so we we provide that environment for them um, and, and try to mix it up so it's it's not all serious you know, they, they get to do some games and crafts and that kind of and stuff. They get too. a snack. And, and some, snack. there's a nutrition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, uh, and another question through the chair. Um, who provides the homework assistant assistance? Are they trained in any way? Um, yeah, we have, we have actually credentialed teachers. Um, mm-hmm. Many of you know Brian Flowers, uh, who's on our staff. He's, he's a teacher and works okay. for us, too. So, Just curious, because I would be of no help. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. No, but you know what I mean. Yeah. No, it's a good. It's a good program. I've it's witnessed great it for program. years. Um, there's, and they do. They they help them help the kids with with their uh, homework, and they're there for all kinds of other support. But they also have crafts and games, and you know they 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 they, they really keep the kids uh, engaged. And you know, at Panorama, it's good because they have a a little gym that they they have different events going on and whatnot. But uh, it also has been a place for where where they've we've also at, at or we mean in the Brisbane School District had over the years per also provided some some staff that could also could help in, right. in the homework process and stuff. So they they do a good job and and I've never heard from and we we would all poll parents on this as well um, several years ago about about the program and it's 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 something that parents really want so. And at Panorama too, you might recall that's that's the only school of the four where we actually offer it all the way down to kindergarten level. Kindergarten all the other level. schools, it's first yep. through uh, yep. sixth. Through the chair, 
you, you just answered my question. First through six yeah. is the age group? Okay, thank you. Well, I make a motion that we approve or recommend to the council that this be done. Yeah, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No? No? Okay. No, I said this would be a short meeting because what I expected to take the bulk of our time this evening, and I was overly optimistic when we prepared the agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, the next item for those watching at home is the Giamona Pool Use Agreement with the Daily City Dolphins Swim Club. Mm -hmm. um, just by, by way of background, Daily City Dolphins program has been around for a long, long time. And the pool, their home pool is Giamona Pool. They have a use agreement with the city of Daly City that, interestingly enough, runs through December 31st of 2016. That's the use agreement. For reasons that I can't understand, their, their fee schedule that they're, they're currently operating in expired December 31st of 2015. So we have actually had a series of meetings over several months trying to... Uh, come to an agreement and we haven't yet arrived there we're, we're still a ways away in negotiations I, I was hoping the way things were going it was looking really good but we, we met as recently as last Friday and uh, there's there's still some work on both sides to do so I am hopeful that maybe February we'll have something to share with you but uh, I'm okay. sad to say tonight we're just not quite there and through the chair the Daily City Dolphins yes to clarify um is that a private it is yes it's group? it's a it's a it's a 501c3 board that oversees it the kids that participate do pay dues uh -huh. on a monthly basis and they train at, at Giamona. they have coaches they're competitive and then they compete in different uh, swim meets as well as host two big swim meets a year and they've been uh, at Giamona pool in more than 20 years, I know yeah. that. Yeah, I think quite a while. Closer to 25, yeah. I think. Probably. Yeah. And they they used to be there on a handshake, mm -hmm. um, and that that was more formalized. And they literally went from and I, I can fill this part in um, just so you have a better understanding of why this is a little bit sticky. So they were paying about $200 a month for the use of the pool. Um, they today are paying $4,400 a month. Mm for limited, very limited use of the pool, and in some cases, as few as three lanes of, of the pool, because we have competing interests there. We have our own swim lessons. We have uh, recreational uh, lap swim, fitness swim, uh, aqua aerobics and all that stuff. So there's a lot of competing interests for the pool. So because they've been squeezed into a relatively small part of the pool, their membership has dropped dramatically. So they, they Usually we hover about 100 members strong. Um, I believe today they're under 70, and they, they, they're at capacity. So we're trying to find a way to keep them sustainable, um, give them up some more lanes, and at a reasonable, more reason, $4,400 um, was more than they could afford, if you can imagine, you know, 70 kids. Um, they, they will, they are... <laughs> going to be bankrupt if we continue to charge them that much so we're, we're trying to find a reasonable monthly fee and try to find a way to accommodate their need to have more lanes to keep the group thriving and flourishing and, and quite honestly we, we have a, a little bit of a symbiotic relationship with them our own aquatic staff the vast majority of them didn't just show up on our doorstep they 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 grew up in this town and they were daily city dolphins themselves and worked through the ranks um, so, th you know, they're, they're, they're having some struggles to, to try and stay afloat, no pun intended, but something's got to give. And, right. you know, hopefully we, we can come back in a month with a mutually agreeable. Uh, Without jeopardizing any of our existing program. Pardon? Without jeopardizing any of our existing well, programs. Well, you know, that's, we're going to have to have that discussion. Um, like I mentioned, we have competing interests and. To, to give them everything we want, there's got to be there's got to be some give and take on both sides. So it, it the one thing that, that we're not willing to sacrifice is is our swim lesson programs. So those are very near and dear and close to us. 
Um, we may discuss whether the lap swim, is, you know, it's, it's, it's trying to balance what, what is the priority for, for this board, for the council, for the community? Is it a program serving youth or is it adult lap swim that theoretically, I mean, I, I don't know, <laughs> go too far on this, but you know, there are, there are, there are other options for recreational swim and, and, you know, lap swim for fitness. There are no other alternatives for this club that's based here. You know, they, and believe me, they've looked, they've looked at Charlie Sava pool. They've looked at the Jeff pool. They've looked at, uh, Jenna Pomeroy and you know every every pool around and in most pools there's a shortage. It's kind of like soccer fields. <laughs> there just are not enough lanes of, of swimming pool to meet the needs of the competing interests of the community. And you know, our priorities are little guys learning how to swim. We think that's in, right. an incredibly important life life skill to learn. It. Um, but a lot of these kids, they're they're younger kids. We're not talking you know 18, 20 year old kids. We're talking you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, you know, up into high school. So, okay. hopefully one month from tonight, we'll, yeah. we'll have something to present. And I'm, I'm anxious to see if you, if you want to comment, there's no action to take tonight because we don't have an agreement, but if, if there's some thoughts you want to share with where you think the priority should be, I'm certainly open to that. Just fair. That's all. Yeah. I'm sure that, you know, you're weighing the, 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 um, the agenda of the, uh, the dolphins versus uh, along with the agenda of uh, the daily city Absolutely. program and and um, you know the uh, dolphins go back a long ways as long as I've been a resident of daily city there's been the dolphins and um, matter of fact Mr. Wales who used to um, run the program with the dolphins coached my daughters down at El Camino High School uh, and the Wells family so um, hopefully there, there can be some median point and I will say this yeah. I'm, I'm very optimistic yeah. we've we've had some you know they're they're lively discussions oh, I'm no sure. doubt but but very cordial absolutely and oh, they're, yeah. they're, the board is a great bunch of folks and you know in the end we, we want to get to an agreement we're, we're not you know trying well, to trying to make them go away we I want them to succeed yeah during the last I remember during the last negotiation a couple of years back there was a lot of rumors going around that most of the kids did not live in Daly City. Is that still the case? Um, I don't know that I would say most. I, I haven't asked for that latest data. Um, it's, it's definitely a mix, but of, of the parents that I'm talking to, I think they're all Daly City okay. people. But I, I mean, that's, that's a, I, actually, it occurred to me after our last meeting that I knew that that, that question is going to come up because it was a, a bone it of contention. It was a huge last bone time. of contention. It was. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I can just do it. You know, I don't need a roster. I think that no, was part of it no, was yeah. just even by zip code, you know, yeah, I, right. I think they would probably be willing to share that data. Thank you. Well, it's all, it'll be really important on their fee structure, you know. How well, and, 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 and to that point too, I think it's fair to ask our recreation lap swimmers the same question. I mean, absolutely. They're not, they're oh, not all, no they're, question. they're not all Daily City. Right, right. No, but I mean, it, we have so many programs that are, the resident pays this fee right. and non-residents pay that fee and that should be across the board for these programs you know i mean and um just because we have a really nice pool and you live in san bruno you should pay a little more or use san bruno's pool <laughs> <laughs> and i pick on san bruno i'm sorry that's okay we do too okay well thanks joseph anybody else okay. have any? No. thank you thank right, you moving on to commissioner reports anybody uh, no reports but uh, just through the chair um this afternoon or each day i drive through Sarah vista i see the progress of the norwood playground oh, yeah. and um looking good yeah yes. it's looking bright and good and uh they just took um uh pulled out either the 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 soft component that's uh, it's on the floor to kind of like recondition the, the the grounds over there to restall it back. So um, I'm anxious to see and know when um, potential ribbon cutting is happening. And uh, so keep us informed. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And the other thing too is the parking lot at Dolger looks nice. It looks great. It's not done yet, but it looks, <laughs> but it looks <laughs> nice. Yeah, they it looks ran nice. into some weather. Yeah. But. No. Unexpected, but happy. Oh, I, I, I think they knew the risk when they started that job. And, I would just say I did. Um, I attended the Yuletide, um, and and I, I enjoyed the booths, 
how they had the where you could go and kind of vote for the booth that was decorated, you know, and whatnot. So it's kind of nice. Got an opportunity to get up on uh, up on the stage and turn the tree on this year. So <laughs> again, our staff, well done. Um, at this time, anybody else? All right, announcements and uh, communications. Sure, we've got a couple of quick ones uh, on your agenda. You see coming up on Saturday, March 5th, is the Fun Health and Safety Fair with our partners at the Ceremony Center. Mm -hmm. That's going to be Saturday, March 5th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, is that the, I don't know why that made it on the agenda and others didn't, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. But more importantly and sooner than that is um, on Saturday, February 13th, just right around the corner, we will be celebrating our 24th annual National Black History Month. That will be at Cafe Dolger at Westlake Park. Of course, as always, you know, admission is free. And uh, some of you that have been in the past know that uh, there's some awfully tasty food available mm -hmm. to purchase that day and a big uh, assortment of entertainment, uh, singing, dancing, poetry, um, and items to purchase. That's some really beautiful Crafts. items. Crafts. Not as much. Um, it's it's more focused on, on the entertainment and less on on the retail. So component. that's why it was moved from the gym to the cafe. Right. There there are a handful of Afrocentric vendors, but I, less than five, I think, oh, okay. compared to a whole gym full. Gotcha. Um, but there's certainly some good food. The food. Oh yeah. Oh. The barbecue. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> food trucks or actual actual food by prepared by our staff. Oh, okay. Uh, on on site, yeah. So cool. Yeah. You can tell we oh, we don't no. like to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I last You're year like, it was <laughs> it's it's overwhelming. It's it's a lot of food. No, last year was pretty good. So show up, everyone. <laughs> yeah, and come hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have public tonight, so no public comment. It, um, do you want me to pass? Pardon me. Do you want me to Go pass ahead. those? Are those ours? Oh yes, please. Oh, well, I thank you. <laughs> Reminder cards for you. Nice. Thank you. And at the, you. this time uh, we'll adjourn. But before we do that, we have adjourn in memory, Denise. I'd like to adjourn in memory of Council Member Carol Platt, retired, passed away last week, and was started her career in Daly City, attending meetings, and then as a recreation commissioner. So. Rest in peace. She definitely will be missed. Thank you, Denise. Thank All you. Right, this time we're adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>